Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I've got an all new Steam release from Hornby. The BR Standard Class 9F has been a staple in Hornby's range since 1971 and in fact any Hornby Class 9F you have ever seen is derived from that 1971 model. It's shocking isn't it? They did redesign the mechanism a couple of times but the model has never received a from the ground up retool until today because here we are in 2022 and here is an all new Hornby Class 9F designed recently from the ground up and this is incredibly exciting and in fact I personally did not know this was coming. Uh, maybe Hornby did let us know that this was on the way but last I heard I was looking at the engine shed blog that Hornby do and I saw some painted samples. I didn't know that this model was about to be released but here it is. It is out and it is with customers. Now as you might expect from a very large and new tooled locomotive from Hornby the price is incredibly expensive. In fact, look at this, they've actually cracked the £250 price mark with £252.99. Obviously that price is a lot higher than it was when these models were announced because Hornby have actually increased their prices a couple of times. But yeah, £252.99, I think that's possibly the most expensive Steam Loco I've ever reviewed. Don't think I've ever seen one more expensive than that. Fortunately, I didn't pay that. I got this example from Derails Models for £206.99, so that's quite a good discount, uh, but still obviously a lot of money. So clearly I have very high expectations for this model. Over the last couple of years, I have had quite a lot of complaints, haven't I, with new Hornbeat Locos, and I'm hoping at that sort of price, a lot of them will be addressed in this Loco. Now, one of those complaints is lack of proper packaging, and I'm glad to say that Hornby seem to have made some real effort here, which is great to see, because these Locos have not left Hornby in the big boxes that you can see here. And by the way, yeah, this is a much larger box than we normally see from Hornby. But this actually came packaged in this much larger box, which was complete with a fragile sticker on the front. That's really good to see. And inside we saw this loco box with some foam clamps on each end. Now, Derails Models, that's the retailer I bought this from, they say they added that bubble wrap that you can see. Um, but to be honest, I think it would probably have even been okay without that, with the, you know, the foam on the corners. So Hornby have made an effort to make the packaging much better, but I've still not seen the model yet. So let's find out whether they've made improvements to their quality and their standards on the model itself. And more importantly, let's find out whether the new Hornby 9F is worth up to £252. It's going to have to be something very, very special, but you know what? It just might be. So, as you'll probably be able to tell from the box here, I've gone for the 9F in the BR Green, and this one is Evening Star. And this loco is very special for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was the last ever steam locomotive to be built by British Railways, and that is accurate because Tornado and the other new builds, they are newer, but they're not built by British Railways. And it's also preserved as part of the National Collection in the National Railway Museum, and that explains this uh, sort of special packaging, it's not in the regular Hornby style. Now I don't know whether this extra large box is because this is a railway museum edition, um, so please do let me know if you've got one of these models that is not Evening Star, did it come in a box like this? I'd be interested to know. I do really like this box though because on the opposite side that you can see here we've got a gorgeous line drawing of the steam locomotive. That looks great. And then on this front end of the box, you can see we've got a brief history of the 9F, more specifically Evening Star. So pause and read that if you'd like to. And then on the end of the box, you've got some of Hornby's new drawings dated 2021, because obviously, yes, this is a brand new tool loco. Let me show you the end of the box. We've got the product number here, which is R3988. It is a BR Class 9F 2100. Evening Star, and it's got the famous Evening Star number, 9220. This is a DCC-ready locomotive. 
and it has a 21 pin socket in the tender, not the eight pin socket that most Hornby Locos have. Uh, I think all of Hornby's new stuff is having 21 pin sockets now, so do bear that in mind. Right, I don't think there's anything more to say now before I get the box open. So interested to see the Loco, interested to see what the packaging's like inside. Please keep those fingers crossed that this is a quality model. And I think the box lifts up like this. Yeah, it's, it is a complete departure from Hornby's usual packaging. And it's a snug fit as well, but I think I'm getting it. Okay, wow, so we've got like um, a full Dapple style packaging going on here. So we've got some foam in the front. Yeah, so this is good. Yeah, 250 quid loco. I'll tell you what, it's packaged like a 250 quid loco. That's really good to see. Right, so let's pull this out. I'm about to get a sense of the weight. Yeah, it feels like there's a relatively heavy model in there. That's pretty good. We'll look at that in a moment. Let's have a look at the paperwork. So this looks fairly standard. Everything else has looked completely new and refreshed. This looks pretty standard. Uh, class 9F, let's have a look inside. Oh, alas, not that standard. No, this has had a refresh as well. So nice diagrams. Lubrication shows you the lube points. Fitting accessories, there's a little sneak preview of what you've got. Tender brake rigging, buffer beam detail, steps, etc., etc. Oh, you've got a close coupling option, so if you want loco and tender to sit closer, that's fine. Assembly, connecting and disconnecting the loco and tender. And then you've got access to the interior of the tender where you can fit. It looks like a speaker, perhaps, and also, obviously, the DCC decoder. Then on the back, not too much to see there. So we've not actually seen what the loco chassis looks like yet, so that will have to be a surprise for later on, I think. But let's crack on with the loco, and I tell you what, I don't know if you'll have spotted it yet, but I've seen a rather interesting feature. And we're gonna to get to that straight away with the accessories pack. So, look at this. We've got painted figures. <laughs> and they're quite nicely painted figures as well. So, for the first time in ages, possibly forever, we've got highly detailed, reasonably scaled, and nicely painted figures in a Hornby Loco. Obviously, we've seen those big, black chunky figures that are unpainted before quite a few locos have had that not that many but a fair number this is really cool and of course we've got other manufacturers like acura scale who are you know offering crew separately and they're 3d printed and they're really expensive like 10 quid i think for a couple here we've got them thrown in for free so again expensive loco but it seems to be having these features i can also see what looks like some etched evening star nameplates in there so that's awesome. You've got the option to fit a higher quality plate in there. We've got brake rigging. We've got proper screw link couplings. They are the movable type, so you can fit those if you want to. And then we have the other accessories, such as the steps that the instructions pointed out. So I'm impressed with that. That's really good. Crew is a fantastic inclusion. Don't get me wrong, this model should have features like that at this price. I'm just saying it's quite nice to actually see them rather than pay all that money and get your box standard Hornby Loco. So, so far it's looking good, but let's have a better look at the model. Here we go. Oh, quite nervous. Okay, I'm about to whip the plastic off. Let's look at that finish. Oh, yes. Yes. Look at that. Nice work, Hornby. Yep, that looks like a Backman Loco. <laughs> Look at that, you can see it shining already. I've not even picked it up yet. Yeah, that is a quality finish. I can see already that these valves on the top here, safety valves, I guess, they're made of metal. Yeah, clearly they've got a metal finish to them. That looks awesome. Right, let's lift this up then, see what the weight's like. Oh yeah, tell you what, it's a big loco, so it should be heavy, and it certainly is. All right, so here it is, the Hornby Class 9F. And this is really crazy. This is really crazy because I'm so used to seeing the Railroad 9F, the 1971 model. And obviously this is similar. I mean, it's still a 9F. It's that 9F shape. It's that 210 wheel configuration, but it looks so much better in terms of the detail, in terms of the decoration. The decoration looks outstanding. It really does. That banding looks awesome. All of that pipe work, no longer is it molded. It looks like it's separately fitted. Oh, so this immediately is showing signs of being a quality model. And I'm so, so glad to see that. I hope when we take a closer look at this and I start going in deeper that this remains a quality model in my eyes. 
my instinct tells me that it's going to but you know fingers crossed this really does look cool right so brief history on the 9f's in real life then we'll take a much closer look at this model okay looking forward to this Designed by Robert Riddles, the BR Standard Class 9F would be the final standard locomotives to be produced for British Railways. They represented the ultimate development in freight locomotive and they proved themselves to be extremely fast and powerful. With their 10 small driving wheels they became some of the most powerful locomotives ever to be constructed in Britain, but their reign proved to be quite short-lived. Evening Star was the last of the class constructed in 1960 and it was also the last steam locomotive to be built by British Railways as I've told you. It was the only locomotive to be built with the intention of preserving it at the time and it can still be seen today at the National Rail Museum. A grand total of nine 9F locomotives have been preserved although the rest were scrapped not that long after being constructed. So. There it is, the brand new BR Standard Class 9F from Hornby, up close and personal for you. And yeah, this is an insanely expensive model. In fact, it's possibly the most expensive steam locomotive I have ever reviewed. And do I wish this was a little bit less expensive so that more people had a chance of affording this? Absolutely, that would have been great to see. But let me tell you what this isn't. This is not a super cheap model which is being sold for a really high price. I can name quite a few Hornby Locos that I think are guilty of that, but honestly I do not think that is the case with this. Whether this model looks like a £250 locomotive I'm not entirely sure, but this looks and feels like a quality model and that is really fantastic to see. For instance, the boiler and firebox here, die cast. Yeah. They are actually made of metal. What an incredible quality feature that is. And that makes the model seriously heavy at 473 grams. The Hornby Railroad version of this model, which was heavy, that came in at 426 grams, so it's considerably heavier than that. It is a little bit lighter than the Backman 9F, which comes in around 10 grams heavier at 484 grams. But then again, the Backman 9F that I tested had almost no torque in its mechanism. So as long as this Hornby 9F has a decently powerful motor, I'm 99% sure that this will be the better puller of any 9F I've ever tried. So let's take a deep dive at this locomotive, which I'm going to say is absolutely tremendous from Hornby. So the finish is incredible. Look at this. Look at the shine of the boiler there. It's a really, really impressive look. Also, the Backman 9F, the Hornby Railroad 9F, have horrible seam lines going across the top. This one does not. Now, this one does have some seams, but they are disguised at the side. I do think the back of the smoke box doesn't look great. Yes, yeah, some of the parting lines there are a little bit distracting, but they are much more subtle than we've seen on every other 9F I've looked at. And like I say, they are not slap bang across the top of the model, which is really good to see. The decoration is absolutely faultless in all seriousness look at this the banding there's no overlap there's no messiness i really can't see a single blip in that banding that is absolutely fantastic the same is true across the running plate you've got this lovely lining along it i think the running plate is made of plastic but it's not warped it looks perfectly straight and it's also got this fine separately fitted pipe work on it as well absolutely tremendous the side of the cab is exquisitely lined. You've got the running number on there, the classification. The cylinders are the same, gorgeous lining on there. The smoke deflectors do have the Evening Star nameplate printed on, although, as I say, we've got the higher quality etched ones provided in the detail pack. That's fantastic. The cab windows are lined. The buffer beams have lovely paint on them. And the front of the smoke box door is complete with the running number, the shed code, and a very straightly fitted smoke box dart. And that leads us on to the next aspect of this model, and that is the quality. This is a complex model, folks. There are a lot of separately fitted parts involved here. And yet, I, I can't see a single bit of glue. I can't see any of that misting that you get from low quality glue. I can't see any fingerprints. I can't see any overgluing. 
it really does look fantastic. The complexity of the pipework here in front of the cab area is phenomenal. I think it is made of plastic. Uh, it doesn't look particularly metallic or anything. Perhaps that's a small criticism, um, but it is neatly applied. And the little whistle there, again, I think that's just made of plastic. It's just painted. Same goes with the pipework down at the front. It's not particularly metallic looking. That's pretty much always the case with ready to run locos, but at least it is nicely applied. Even these little connecting rods on the side of the firebox and boiler, those are separately fitted parts. They are immaculate. We've got the metal safety valves, which are really high shine. They look fantastic. If I am being honest, I don't think the chimney looks outstanding. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly just a plastic piece, isn't it? I think it would have been better if that was real metal with a real metallic finish, perhaps a bit like the safety valves. But at the very least, it is a nicely molded piece. Proportionally, it does look decent. Underneath the smoke box, we've got what looks like a separately fitted etched metal part there. Look at that, that's just such quality, isn't it? Separately fitted lamp brackets on the buffer beam there, which is also peppered with rivets. That looks wonderful. The wheel set is great as well. You've got the traditional Hornby wheels, which I think are plastic, but they're fully molded and realistic looking. The coupling rods look beautifully fine. That's fantastic. The valve gear and running gear, again, all looks really, really good in my opinion. You've still got the daylight underneath the boiler. Yep, yeah, so the gear train is presumably housed just in this area here, as Hornby managed to do with the railroad version. So that all looks perfectly realistic. Up on top of the cab, we have the separately fitted and poseable vent for the crew inside. That's a nice little feature. And then the interior cab detail itself is absolutely awesome. You've got the cream paint of the cab interior, fully painted gauges. Look at that. Oh, that's fantastic. We have an open firebox, which does have LEDs behind it. I remember seeing that on Hornby's posts. So we'll take a look at that later on. Don't forget, we've also got crew that we can fit inside the cab. So when you consider the extreme level of detail in there, the lights, the crew, it's just one of the best cabs ever, isn't it? It has to be one of the best cabs. On the other side of the cab, you've got this classic 9F pipework. Again, it does look like it's just made of plastic. Yeah, not a metallic finish on that, but the way in which it's been applied is quality and it does look fantastic. Yeah, for me, this is a wonderful model. The metal construction, the great shiny finish, the objectively massive level of detail is just really, really cool. Oh, by the way, sprung buffers. <laughs> Silly to point it out because of course it's got them, but yeah, sprung buffers, how absolutely awesome. Let's take a look at the tender then, which is similarly well detailed. Again, the decoration and the finish on this is second to none. The light bounces off it in a genuinely gorgeous way. The British Railways crest looks excellent, as does the lining. I think the underframe detail is more pronounced than I've seen on this kind of tender before. I assume this is a new tool tender then, because it really does look great. You can see a water scoop between the frames there. We do have brake rigging to fit if you want to. The cab doors are pre-fitted and very nice and sturdy. All of the handrails on the tender seem to be separately fitted and made of metal. We've got painted detail on the cab end of the tender too. Those handles are painted red, which is gorgeous. The coal load is removable, I believe, and quite realistic looking too. Yes, yeah, not a bad coal load in all. Around the back, you've got a separately fitted ladder, which is really nice and fine. A whole load more handrails and separately fitted lamp irons, and another detailed buffer beam, which can have more added to it if you want to. The tender's also got this NEM coupling pre-fitted, which has got a little bit of left and right movement to it, so that's absolutely fine. And the loco to tender coupling out of the box doesn't look too bad. Obviously, there is a bit of a gap there, but this is a large locomotive with a long wheelbase. Yeah, all in all, I don't think this is too much of a bad compromise. And obviously, you can opt for the closer coupling if you want to, and then that will be even more realistic. We do have quite a bit of wire on display here. Yeah, that's not the neatest in the world. That is fairly standard of Hornby. Uh, maybe it's time that they addressed this, but overall that is a relatively small complaint on what is genuinely a very, very impressive model. So this is, this is the happiest I have ever been, I think, to spend this amount of money on a locomotive. This cost me £206.99. I think this is the only time that I can honestly say that I'm somewhat satisfied with a model that cost me over £200. 
And to say that it's from Hornby is a very big surprise. And I think the really impressive part is that not only have they created a really impressive model, but they've listened to criticism and clearly tried to make improvements. Some of my criticism I think has been really, really harsh, sometimes quite nasty, I've mocked them, I've been mean, and almost all of my criticisms have been completely alleviated on this model. And what an impact that has made, what a quality model this is as a result. This must have taken a lot of hard work from Hornby, and I want to say publicly, I think it was absolutely worth it. So well done Hornby, not been the biggest fan of you recently, I think everybody knows that, but credit where credit's due, this is an incredible model. At least it looks incredible. How does it perform? What's the mechanism like? Let's find out. So there she is, the outstanding Hornby 9F down onto the track, and the first performance test has all been filmed. I'm not going to give any more away than that at the moment. I'll show you that in just a second. Next, I went on and looked at the mechanism of this loco, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. So overall, yeah, the quality of the mechanism is great. The loco has a blind axle in the centre here. You might think that's a compromise that Hornby have made to make this model get around curves, but actually, no, that's perfectly accurate. The real loco had a blind axle like that too. In terms of pickups, we have all wheels picking up on the tender, which is awesome, and we'll look at the loco pickups in just a second. The base keeper plate is fully removable via a few screws, which are easy to undo. And then because of the spring-loaded contacts, you can pull the base keeper plate away from the chassis for servicing and maintenance purposes. And you can see also, yes, we have all pickups on the loco driving wheels. In terms of drive, we have a single driven axle, so it's not fussy or overcomplicated. That's all you need, and that's great. And as you can also see, there are proper turned metal bearings on all of the driving axles, so that's fantastic. The chassis, even though we have a largely die-cast body, the chassis too is die-cast, which is great. This motor worries me, though. Now, this looks exactly the same as the motor that was in the Hornby S15 and in the Hornby B12 that I had so much trouble with. Now, it might just be that they've used the same outer casing and there's a different internal motor, but without giving too much away about the performance test, I don't think that's the case. This motor should be a really high torque motor. It's got a really long armature and the coils have a huge interface area with the magnets. Uh, so why these motors are like they are, I don't know. But in my example, at least it's not performing well. But yeah, there are two flywheels on this motor, which is great. Uh, quite heavy though, of course, yet again. Um, LEDs, yeah, we've got a single LED, in fact, which is just behind the firebox door, and there's also a little diffusing filter attached to the body, which diffuses that light a little bit, which is nice. And then the 21-pin socket is inside the tender, and I think it's just a few screws to get in there, so no problem at all. And then the back-to-back -back gauge comes in at 14.2 to 14.3 millimeters, which is a little bit below the standard, although I was expecting it to be maybe even looser than that uh, to get around those second radius curves, but let's see how it actually does perform. Let me roll the performance test. Right, yeah, I am really quite nervous about this. This is a massive locomotive, huge number of driving wheels. Back when Hornby first started creating 9Fs, it was a massive challenge. This has got to run excellently in order to be worth the money, even to the remotest degree, in my opinion. So there's a lot riding on this. Forwards direction, let's ask and answer the question, does the loco work? Here we go, first ever time seeing one of these run. Let's go. Whoa. Tell you what, that was quite a nice start, wasn't it? Oh. At the moment, it's looking like a gorgeous runner. Look at that. Look at the valve gear and the coupling rods all going round. Wow. And let me do a 50% run. There you go. I don't think that's too fast at all. That seems slower than the old Hornby Railroad 9F. Uh, which suggests more torque. So we haven't run in yet, so obviously there's room for improvement still, but let's have a go if see if there's torque. You ready? 50% speed. All right, <laughs> not a great deal. It is managing to turn its wheels though. Go a bit more and then it goes. Okay, so it's a really heavy loco. There's a lot of movement going on here. If after this is run in, it's able to turn its wheels and you know be a good hauler, I'll be very, very impressed. At the moment, though, I've got to say, it's very smooth. 
Don't you, don't you agree? Yeah, that's really smooth. It's quiet. I'm not really hearing anything from the motor. It's just sort of the movement of the the wheels and the rods and everything. It's it's quite impressively quiet to say how much is going on. Yeah, even at the higher speeds. Listen to this. There are some locos that sound healthy when you run them. There are some that sound healthy. They sound like quality machines. And there are some that just sound awful. They sound like cheap toys that just have a really poor quality mechanism. This sounds like the former. This sounds like a quality loco. All right, so as I say, not been running yet. It's still got 30 minutes in each direction ahead of it. But straight out of the box, what is the crawl like? I'm gonna give this a little juice, let's see. Oh, it's not bad, you know. It's not really cogging, but it's... Hmm, yeah, maybe it is cogging. So cogging a little bit, but it's got some control down at that low end, hasn't it? Yeah, I think that's quite impressive. To say how heavy this is, this is heavier than a Hornby Hush Hush, folks. To say that it's got five driving wheels on each side to turn, that's not bad. That die-cast body is heavy. In reverse. Yeah, so it's a little bit coggy, but it can do it. It can do those slow speeds. And, you know, on different controllers, perhaps on DCC, that could be even better. And then at these speeds, I mean, look at look how majestic it looks at this sort of speed. Like, about there, I think. Look at that. Outstanding. Right, so on the straight, to say it's not been warmed up or anything yet, it's performing really, really well. But how will it get on around the layout? Well, let's find out. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a sensible speed, I have to say. Around the curves, oh, very, very slight slowdown there, but nothing too bad. And you know what, to say that this massive 210 is capable of taking second radius curves. That is non-trivial. You know, that is quite the design challenge, isn't it? And for it to be smooth, or even more basically than that, just staying on the track on those slight inclines and curves, that's something, isn't it? I am really quite pleased with this thing, folks. So it looks phenomenal. The quality is great, and the performance seems to be decent. Not outstanding performance, I wouldn't say, but all things considered, it's really quite a good runner, isn't it? So I'm going to let this thing run in. I'm really excited to see this thing with, uh, I don't know, whether, will we do freight? Will we do passenger coaches? Not sure yet, but I'm really looking forward to seeing it haul something. And just for a little interest, here's a look inside the firebox. Yeah, it's actually flickering, isn't it? It's not just an LED that's come on. Here we are on analog and it's flickering. So that's awesome, and it's quite noticeable as well. It's not so subtle that you might miss it. Yeah, that looks really quite effective. Wow, this model is the full package, isn't it? Right, I'll be back shortly, folks. Okay, folks, I am back, and running in is complete. Now, everything I said earlier is true. Um, it's nice and smooth, it's good and quiet, the crawl seemed okay. But I had hoped the issues with torque would go away with running in, and unfortunately they don't seem to have done. On curves, this is still slowing down quite dramatically. On second radius, yes, but also here on some third radius, this is at 40% power, not that far from the controller, it's slowing down hugely. Uh, that isn't right. And of course at this point now I have looked at the mechanism and I know what sort of motor is inside, and I can't say I'm surprised. In fact, the behavior is very, very similar to that of the dodgy B12 I looked at, where I eventually went to the trouble of replacing the motor because there was just a lack of power. Uh, let's see if the torque is still an issue. I'm gonna turn it up to 50% speed. Yeah, look at that. Just about able to turn the wheels, but if I push it back, you can see it goes a lot faster. Now, to start with, I was thinking, maybe this is just an inherent phenomenon with a heavy loco with that much going on in terms of the number of wheels and all of the coupling rods and connecting rods maybe there's just no avoiding that but then i remembered the hornby railroad 9f 
and I literally just a few minutes ago filmed the same test with that. And I don't think you need me to tell you what the difference is here. I mean, clearly there is a lot more torque in that mechanism. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's such a shame because this model deserves a really positive review. And there's clearly the intent to make this a quality mechanism. And who knows, maybe mine is just faulty. There's not much I can do about that. I'm just reviewing the model I've got here. But personally, I think that choice of motor was just a mistake. There's, it's caused too much trouble in the past. And that would be fine, you know, whatever. But the fact is that this is not running great. That's the fact of the matter. And it has that motor. So what other conclusion can I draw? Because everything else in the mechanism, of course, was top notch. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at the performance now. I mean, look, it's not a bad crawl. It's quite coggy, actually. Maybe that's more than it was before in terms of cogginess, but the control is there at the low end. I mean, it's not bad. And forwards, oh, that's less coggy. So yeah, the crawl is fine. It's not outstanding, but when you consider the number of moving parts here, when you consider the number of wheels, it's okay. It's, it's fine. That would be acceptable. Ah, but yeah, that torque issue, not fantastic. And... <laughs> You know, the same was true of the Backman 9F. That was also a really expensive 9F. It's just funny to me that the cheap Hornby Railroad ones are still, still the best runners. They are still the most powerful 9Fs you can get. And um, I think that's a problem when this costs over 250 quid RRP. But yeah, the performance is nice. It's just that, that torque is a problem. And that did show when I did the pulling power test, I only got a reading of 0 0.46 newtons, which is the same as a Backman 2MT tank. <laughs> and the Princess is 0.64 newtons, the Princess Royal. And that, of course, has the big chunky motor that I think this model should have had, really. So yeah, that's a disappointment. Um, I've set up some coaches. I think we've got eight coaches here. So um, yeah, goodness knows what's gonna happen with those, but I'm gonna test them with this loco and then I'll show you how the Hornby Railroad 9F gets on with the same coaches, same controller, same power, and we'll see what the difference is. Because I think this is gonna struggle. I think this is really gonna struggle if it's anything like the B12. So let's go couple, let's see what happens. Okay, let's see if I can be steady. Yeah, you really can. It's, it's a controllable model. That's for sure. I mean, the control you have over it, even on analog, is great. Um, but how is it going to perform with coaches? Let's try again. Let's go forwards. Eight coaches. It's not a huge load for a 9F, you know, one of Britain's most powerful steam locos. Should make mincemeat of eight coaches. But let's see if it does. It's crawling beautifully with them. Uh, we are at over 30 on the controller there. So, again, slightly concerning. And now we're up to 50. So I think already that's noticeably slower. Uh, but it is speeding up maybe. Right. Catch up with that in just a second then, shall we? So on the middle line, I've got the Hornby Railroad 9F. Which seems to run at a similar sort of speed, if slightly faster. Yeah, I do think maybe faster. But there she goes. Yeah, got some Pullmans. We're going to see her on the outside line in just a moment. And then on the inside line, we've got the other major 9F on the market. Well, I don't know if it's still on the market. Oh, quite recently, you could still get these. It is the Backman 9F, 50%. Yeah, even that doesn't seem as bad as the Hornby one in terms of power and torque. And that one was pretty bad. All right, let's see. Okay, here goes. We're starting at a decent speed, 50% or half power, eight coaches. Oof. Ooh, yeah, wow. That was an insane slowdown. It's recovered now, it's away from the curve. And now it's feeling the burn from the incline. Loco not currently on curve. And now it's reaching a curve as well as the incline. It's almost coming to a stop. Uh, it's not a tight curve at the top. Wow, that's shocking. 50% power. And even more weirdly, that's exactly what the B12 was doing with that dodgy motor. So, are the motors dodgy, or is, is this how the motors are now? Do current batches of that type of motor actually run like that? Is that normal for them? In that case, it's a very poor choice of motor for the 9F, for such a powerful loco. Let's have a look at the Railroad 9F hauling the same train then. Here we go. 
Look at the difference. Just look at the difference. That is just absolute night and day, isn't it? So no, that performance is definitely not just because of the size of the 9F. Because you might just think, you know what, yeah, maybe it's just the nature of the beast. But it, it clearly isn't. Yeah, that is really disappointing because this is a gorgeous, gorgeous loco. A fantastic effort from Hornby. Clearly, every aspect of the model has been put together with quality in mind. And it deserves a positive review, but there is no getting away from the fact that the performance, and more specifically the pulling power, is just absolutely naff. Now, I can't speak for every example of the new Hornby 9F, and I can't speak for everybody's layout. Maybe on DCC or with broader curves or no inclines or whatever, you know, maybe it would be fine for you. But my example runs like this. I've been very careful with it. I've run it in properly. I've even looked at the mechanism now, so I've checked that everything's assembled as it's supposed to be. Everything looks absolutely fine. So I can say with some confidence that the condition of the Loco is fine. I think the only thing that can be wrong with it, if anything, is the motor. And that's such a shame. Ah, it's a letdown for me overall. Yeah, that pulling power is just not acceptable on a 9F, and I think there's no other nicer way of looking at it. So that's disappointing. Uh, please do let me know if you've got one of these new 9Fs. Um, hook it up to a load of coaches. Try it on some inclines. Try it on your second, third, fourth radius, whatever. Uh, let me know how you get on. But, you know, the fact of the matter is we've established that these motors have caused major problems in the past. And I've showed that by replacing it with what I thought was a better motor and showing the improvement in performance. So I have to say I'm not surprised at all to see this motor performing badly in the 9F, which is even larger and heavier than the B12 was. So yeah, that's very unfortunate and uh, it does kind of cast a shadow over an otherwise fantastic, fantastic model. Let's have some ratings then on the all new Hornby 9F. Now, despite the disappointing performance, I think the score's still looking pretty good because of how excellent it is in other areas. For instance, the level of detail, which I've given five star. <laughs> how, how can you fault it? How can you fault it? Fantastic decoration and finish. That looks wonderful. Sprung buffers, intricate cab detail with firebox flickering effects. So many separately fitted parts, many of them made of metal as well. Ah, you just can't really fault the level of detail. It's a five star. The performance for me has to be a two star. The slow speed performance isn't bad at all, and at the high speeds it's really quite nice and smooth. There's nothing wrong with the actual performance characteristics, other than the fact that there is so little power here that the Loco very often slows to a crawl. Yes, with coaches, but even on its own, the tighter the curves, the worse this is, but it still happens on broader curves, such as third radius and even broader. And I've fairly well demonstrated that this is not how it has to be and the other 9F locomotives, i.e. Hornby's own railroad one, is not like that in terms of torque. So it has to lose quite a few stars there. Uh, pulling power, again, 28 coaches, 0.46 newtons. That's the same as a Backman 2MT. Uh, it's much less than a Princess at 0.64. So a loco of this weight, you would expect more pulling power than that. And of course, at this sort of load, 28 coaches, it's not going to be able to move anywhere, <laughs> it's just going to lock up. Having said that though, this is why it's so sad because the mechanism is a five star mechanism, right? It's got so many pickups, all of those driving wheels have pickups, the tender wheels have pickups, really unfussy mechanism, single driven axle, proper bearings on all the driving wheels, really serviceable, easy to get the body off, dual flywheels on the motor, it is a large substantial motor, it's just, I think it's the motor itself. I think it was just a poor choice of motor. Whether or not the insides of that motor casing are the same as the B12 and the S15 that have caused problems in the past, I don't know. But empirically, looking at the way the Loco runs, it's not great. Uh, but I don't think I'm gonna knock it down on mechanism because it's the performance that suffers. So mechanism is a five star. Quality for me is four and a half star. Yeah, it's a really good quality loco. The build quality is high, there's no visible glue. The boiler is made of metal, so the loco is really heavy. Feels great quality in the hands. 
I do think some of the metal work would have benefited from actually being metal and not just plastic painted into metallic colours. Uh, the top of the chimney is a good example, some of the pipe work is another good example, um, and it just contrasts with the actual metal parts such as let's say the safety valves which really do look realistic. So not a big criticism, only loses half a star but I do want to talk about that. Value for money then, I think £252.99 is an insane amount of money for any locomotive. But do you know what, if this ran properly, if this was a really good runner, I wouldn't have said it's a rip-off. In fact, even now, with running the way it does, it's not quite a rip-off because you certainly do get what you pay for in many areas, but at that sort of price, every category needs to be perfect and performance wasn't, so I've knocked off a couple of stars. Overall then, that is 7.62 out of 10, definitely dragged up by the detail, mechanism and quality, but bear in mind that the performance is quite poor and I think you need to think about that when you decide whether you're going to spend the money and get one of these. Into the ranking we go though, 21st place above the Backman 7F and below the Dapple 68. Yeah, it's a great effort, just a pity about that performance. Well folks, that will just about do it for this review. Ah, oh, what a pity that this Loco's got an Achilles heel. Because if it ran perfectly, then I'd be a very happy chappy indeed. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't. Maybe I'm unlucky, maybe they're all like it, I don't know. But that's my review of the model I received. Um, it was very expensive, I expected better in terms of performance, which is a shame. But visually, it's a fantastic model. It really is wonderful. The quality of the build, the thought that's gone into the detailing, and even the quality of the mechanism is second to none. Uh, so, yeah, mixed feelings, mixed feelings. In some ways, it's a fantastic effort from Hornby. In other ways, it just fails to meet the mark. But do let me know what your experiences are. Like I said, um, if you've got one that runs far, far better and you've put it through similar tests that I have, again, please do let me know. Uh, I would love to know whether mine's a one-off or not, or not. But thanks for watching. I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers, folks. Take care.